I've been seeing a lot of people complain about how the ATEM Mini does not have multi-view. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add multi-view to the ATEM Mini using only a few relatively inexpensive parts. Multi-view is usually something you would only use in a studio setting where you have camera operators that are controlling cameras for you, and it lets you see what's on each camera before you cut to it. Sure, it's a great feature, but I have a feeling it's not exactly needed for what most people are using the A10 Mini for. The target market for the A10 Mini is definitely less on the broadcast and professional side and a lot more on the home user and live streaming side. And for most of those applications, you honestly don't need multi-view because you're gonna have like one camera angle and then maybe a computer or a game brought in, maybe a second angle, and they're probably gonna be fixed cameras. So you can get away with just knowing what each angle is ahead of time and cutting to the one you need. But I thought it would be a fun experiment to see exactly what it would take to add multi-view to the A10 Mini anyway, letting you use it in a more professional setting or using it when you are producing a live event and you're not actually in the set yourself. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. There's a whole host of different ranges of products that add multi-view capabilities. And honestly, you can spend about as much money as you want on that. And very quickly, it ends up costing more to add multi-view to the A10 Mini than it does to just buy the next model up for $1,000, which has it all built in, plus even more features. So I didn't want to go and spend like $700 on parts. I wanted to see if it was possible to do this with pretty cheap parts and get sort of like a bare bones minimum multi-view setup. I also want to see if there's a way to do it without like tons of cables everywhere because the last thing I want to do is just have a mess of cables on the desk when I'm using the multi-view. At that point, it really makes more sense to use the television studio, which has it all built in. So I bought a box full of parts. So we are going to see exactly what it takes to add multi-view to the A10 Mini using this pile of parts. Don't worry, I will leave a link to all of these parts in the description below so you can go buy them yourself if you really want to do this. So let's take a look at what we have in here. First, we have the core device that makes all this work. This is a multi-viewer. It basically has four HDMI inputs and one HDMI output. And this is gonna do all the hard work. It's gonna take the four angles from my cameras, which I will set up later, and create a split screen view, which it can output to a monitor. So I spent a while looking around for one of these that was both small and cheap. I didn't want something huge and clunky that was bigger than the A10 Mini. I also want it to be pretty slim. It's only a little bit taller than an HDMI cable. I also found one that's powered off of five volts, which I'll get to why that's important later. So this is the multi-viewer, this is doing all the hard work, but if I plug a camera in here, I obviously can't plug the camera into the A10 Mini. And that is what takes us to this next one, which is an HDMI splitter. And again, I spent quite a while looking for one of these that was small, cheap, and also powered off of five volts. So we're gonna need one of these for each camera. That means I have to have four of these. So really this is the main hardware you're gonna need. Four HDMI splitters and the multi-viewer. But this is where it starts to get a little messy because we need cables for all of these and we need power for all of them. So this is why the five volts thing is important. I wanted everything to be powered by five volts, which means I can power them all off of a USB power supply. I absolutely love this thing. It has AC power input, five USB outs. It supports eight amps in total, 2.4 amps per port. So that is plenty in order to power these things, which usually require less than an amp each. So this is gonna be our power supply. And that means I only have to use one AC power and I don't have any power bricks. So thankfully these little HDMI splitters are all actually USB powered. They actually have a micro USB port on the back, which is awesome. So that makes cables a lot easier to deal with. The trick is that while this multi-viewer does take five volts in, it has a DC barrel jack. So you're also gonna need one of these, which has a USB on this side and a DC barrel jack on this side. Now, when you plug that in, it can be powered over USB, which is just fantastic. Okay, next up, HDMI cables. Again, I don't want a lot of long cables. So for now, we're gonna focus on only the cables that go into the mini and the little splitters and stuff and leave the camera cables for later. So I got these really short HDMI cables. Let's go ahead and open these up next. All right, so here's the first set of cables. We have four HDMI cables. They're again, a little longer than a foot. And then we have another four for the other side, other end of the power cord. I think that's all we need from this box. So let's take a look what we have here now. We've got our power supply for all five pieces. We've got four HDMI cables, four HDMI cables, four micro USBs for power, USB to barrel, DC barrel jack, the multi-viewer and these splitters. Let's wire this all up. All right, so all these little doodads are powered now. Let's do the HDMI next. 
So for each of these, I need to connect one output of the splitter to the multi-view and one to the A10 mini. This is going to get a little messy, I can tell. All right, four splitters are ready. Plugged into the A10 mini. Now we need to connect the monitor to the multi-viewer. This is a fantastic monitor. It's extremely thin and it's powered over USB-C. I unfortunately can't power it from the same one. Maybe if I got one with six ports, I could do it, but I think this might draw too much power. And we can see already what's happening is we're seeing four screens that this pile is generating. Of course, we have no inputs into these splitters yet, so we're not seeing any video feeds. So next up, we're going to connect cameras and actually look at them on the monitor. So I added a little bit of tape here to sort of hold things together because it was getting kind of messy and falling all over the place everywhere. So this is a little better now. It's like a solid chunk. Next step is to plug in the cameras. And I don't know where I'm going to fit the cameras in here, so this will be a bit of a challenge, but I'm going to get four cameras plugged into the four inputs that are on these splitters now. So for this, I'm going to use my random assortment of cameras, connect them all with short little cables. Hope that the batteries last long enough for this video to work. So here we go. All right, and we are done. This is complete chaos in here. Let me show you what we've got here, but it is working and it's pretty cool, I will say. So here's the quick tour. Again, all the cameras are input there. We have one output going to the multi-viewer, one output going to the A10 mini. I've got four cameras here, camera up there, one there, one there, and one over here. And sure enough, we are seeing all four cameras on the screen at the same time. That is pretty cool. This multi-viewer is even handling different resolutions and frame rates these cameras are sending. I didn't bother changing these to the same frame rate at all. They're all set to 1080, but if you look, the multi-viewer is actually showing us. This one's 1080p, that one's 1080i, and it's handling it just fine, and we're seeing all four. So yeah, it took a little bit of wiring. I feel like I did a pretty good job keeping these tiny, but it kind of got more of a mess than I was hoping. So yeah, if you really need multi-view on the A10 mini, you can do it. It's not that expensive. The total cost was, I don't remember what it is, but thanks to the magic of editing, this was the total cost. It's not too bad. So this is the mess we are left with. I thought I was gonna be able to do a little better job about making this tidy, but it turns out trying to get four cameras and an HDMI recorder and a monitor and the A10 mini and the multi-view pile of wires on the same table is a challenge. So was this a good idea? Probably not. Would I recommend doing this? I don't think so. Honestly, if you need a multi-view that bad, don't buy this pile of wires. Just buy the actual device that has multi-view built in because that's what it's for. If you think you need multi-view, try using it without multi-view. Try just getting maybe an external monitor for your one camera. I have a feeling you probably don't need multi-view as much as you think you do. And if you really do, then you're probably up in the pro level and you need to get pro gear. And the ATEM Mini, you know, I love it, it's fantastic. It's not pro gear, it is fantastic, but the broadcast grade stuff is called broadcast grade for a reason. It has more features for broadcast users. And that has been how to get a multi-view on the A10 mini. This was fun to put together. I do have a whole mess to clean up now. I have just made a complete disaster of my office. So if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.